So now we're going to get into the watercolor portion of our project. And it might be nice to alternate the colors, or I can use some kind of color scheme like the, the rainbow and have things go from red to orange to yellow to green to blue. Um, but I like the idea of an alternating color scheme, uh, almost like a checkerboard or something like this. When you start with watercolors, it's important to have a, I like a, a round brush that goes to a point. Unless you're going to fill in a large area, then maybe a square brush is going to be fine. But a round brush that comes to a point can help you get little areas as well as large areas when you use the side of the brush. So to use the watercolors, we get the water um, on our brush and then we activate the colors that we intend to use uh, in the paint set. So you want to use quite a bit of water, um, but not to overflow um, the area. So we just activate it by adding a little bit of water to it. You can also use the lid of some paint sets as a way to kind of mix. So I could add a little bit of water into here and then use that to kind of lighten up my colors and play with them and uh, change them. Um, if you don't have a lid, then some kind of a mixing plate would be fine to use. Uh, I like to use the lid. Just make sure that you wash it out at the end. So let's say I'm going to use a color scheme of, um, oh, I'm going to go for a little bit of blue. So I'm going to mix some blue in with my water that I have in the lid. And one of the things that a lot of people hate about watercolors is this idea that they're hard to control. And the time that it's hard to control is when you put one wet color next to another wet color and then the color bleeds over. So we're going to try and avoid that. And one way to avoid that is by using one color at a time. Also with watercolors, you start light. You don't want to go in like acrylics and you just put in an intense color. With watercolors, you can always get more intense, but you can't, it's much more difficult to get light. So I'm going to go ahead and use blue and I'm going to go ahead and color in um, alternating shells. Now, if I want to paint an area adjacent to it, I need to wait for it to dry. If I don't wait for it to dry, then this color will bleed into the first color. So I started with this one and I can tell that it's mostly dry. Um, the other ones are obviously still wet. So now I can use my alternating color. So I'm going to use an orange. Put some orange over here and I'm going to add some water to that. Now I actually added some orange to the blue because orange and blue are opposite colors. So it makes for a brown, which is good for a shadow. And I did want to have a shadow in there. Now I'm going to paint the body of the uh, snail and I'm going to just use a green. So there's a little bit of bleed happening right now. now I don't actually mind a little bit of bleed. It shows that it's homemade, but if you don't like it, you can use a tissue or wipe it back and let that dry, and then you'll be able to go back and fix it. Now I'm gonna go back and paint in the little log. So this time I'm just gonna use some water on the brown. If a color feels too dark, you can always clean off your brush, add a little bit more water to it and spread that around or steal the color from here and put it into another place. And again, you could use a little tissue or paper towel to kind of clean it up if you weren't happy with it. Now I can play with intensifying my colors. If I wanna show off a shadow, I have a couple ways that I can do that because there's these little bubbles on the shell, I wanna show some shadows in there. So I could use the brown, which is a mix of my opposite colors, or I could use a more intense color of that blue. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna steal some blue, add that to my water, and it's gonna be more intense. Now, if I don't like the hard edge that I see on this, I can use water, just plain water, and use that to soften the edge.
With the orange, I have a couple of choices. I could use intense orange to put there, but I have a feeling that warm colors won't really make it look like a shadow. I also know through color theory that orange and brown are related to each other because if you want to make brown, you just add a little black to the orange and you'll get brown. So I could use brown as a shadow or I could use a neighboring color that's also warm. So I could go for red because the, uh, the other neighbor of, yellow, of um, orange is yellow. That's too light, but red is a little bit more dark. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little bit of red into the shadows of the shell on the orange side. Again, I can just use water, clean water, to blend away the edge. And I can continue to do things in layers. It's important with watercolors that you start light and then adding in your layers um, little by little, more and more intense as you go. If you want something white, just leave it white. Um, so let's say I want to play with the bark of the tree. I can go ahead and add some little textures in here. Maybe I'm going to want to shade the belly of the, um, of the snail. So I can use a more intense green because it's already a cool color. So that might work. Let me try that. Use a little water to blend away the edge. I can even use a little yellow to give him a highlight. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to put a highlight on his top edge. Again, blend it away with a little bit of water. And I can add highlights to the shell too. So um, I've got light blue, we've got a darker blue over here. Neighboring colors to blue are going to be um, green and um, purple. So if I want to do a highlight, um, I could choose to do yellow as well on the blue. And I can use yellow again as a highlight on the red shells because yellow is a neighboring color uh, to orange and red. You can see everything I'm doing is one color at a time. I could go back and keep adding more and more details if I wanted to, and I probably will. I would add some definition or some texture into the shell. I could use black, but that might be too intense. So I could go ahead and add a little bit of water to it and then, you know, add some texture into the shells, uh, texture into the body, maybe even some scales. Uh, into my snail. There's lots and lots more things I can do to kind of elevate this to an even higher level.